What really differentiates Brazil is that everybody wants to be treated equally. If you go into a room, everybody expects you to shake hands with them or hug them if they're a man or kiss them if they're a woman. That's how relationships start. So business is about relationships. You need to have a relationship before you do business. It's a very young market. The average age of the Brazilian population is around 24 years old. The impression I've got, if it's the wrong one, I want to put it straight very quickly, is that the Brazilian consumer doesn't change very easily. The Brazilian consumer gets stuck in its um, ways. Oh, and so young. Every year, you have 3% of the population, there's 3% of youngsters who have not had this Swiss attitude of, you know, for 50 years I'm buying Nestle. <laughs> Why will I change at 85 years? Well, he'd like you to say, for 50 years I've been buying Nestle, and now I'm buying Cadbury's. Yeah, that's why he lo loves this place, because yeah. every year there's 3% who doesn't, have never heard of Nestle or Cadbury, then it's up to him to, to get their... This is also great news for Tanika in her attempt to launch Sleek in Brazil. It's a bit of a risk, because you're asking the Brazilian consumer to change the way they shop for cosmetics, but at least we can be a part of it from the beginning. And it seems good news too for Peter's internet ambitions. Brazil is among the country where the access to the internet, the yeah. time more than in Americans. the internet, yeah. much more than Americans, much internet more than Europeans, okay? That's right, they're Brazil. totally connected to what is happening. It's a very young, very dynamic, very creative society. They're one of the sponsors of the Big Brother equivalent here. On the first night, there were, what, 73 million people estimated to be watching this, right? And we would have got just under a million hits on our website. It couldn't be a better start for my adventure capitalists. Everyone's excited and ready to get cracking. This is Embu das Artes, a huge open-air market just outside the city of Sao Paulo. It's packed with the kind of stuff that Peter hopes will sell on Dreamhead. He's come to meet the artist face to face, but the big question is, will they buy into his business idea or send him packing? So if we were able to offer you a market where yeah. it was free for you to try to sell this, and we only charged you, if you were successful, 10% of the price. Would that be attractive to you? Yes. The good news for Peter is that no one seems to have a problem with his 10% commission. And one way or another, they all seem to get access to the internet. Yes, you can use exactly. New photos, I have. Exactly. It's your shop. In theory, Peter's onto a winner. It's simple economics. As a middleman, you sell someone's product to someone else and charge a big fat commission. Then sit back, light up a cigar and watch the cash roll in. It's that simple. But in the wacky world of the internet, nothing is that simple. The vast majority of startup sites lose money. Lots of it. And why? Because there are millions of websites out there. So you need something very, very special to make yours stand out from the crowd. Privately, I'm really worried about Peter. I think he's seriously underestimating the sort of money needed to establish DreamAid as a business. And that could be a recipe for disaster. DreamAid and Sleek are small companies trying to build a Brazilian business from scratch. But is it the same for the big boys? I'm off to the Cadbury headquarters here in Sao Paulo. I want to know just how big a challenge Cabri are facing getting their chocolate to the Brazilian consumer. Brazil has close to a million stores. Uh, the geographic, just the sheer size of the country is massive. The large uh, uh, supermarkets and convenience stores account for 15% of sales. That's all? So the traditional stores... 15%? The fragment, yes, that's right, 15%, one five. So you have the massive of the business is wow. there in the small stores. Wow, closes. a million stores. How do you break into a market that big? Well, you have to dig deep and put your hand in your very deep pocket. It turns out Capri have bought a business called Adams a giant confectionery company which already has distribution and a decent share of the market in Brazil. 
But the price? Telephone numbers. And I mean telephone numbers. What did Cadbury actually pay for the business? It was a close to $4 billion in total. It was, it was one of the biggest acquisitions in confectionery. Four billion dollars. Billion yes. dollars. I think to be specific, $4.2 billion. $4.2 billion. <laughs> so, what do you get for that kind of cash? Sorry? Are you a nervous flyer? No, no. Oh, good. I'm off with Cadbury's general manager, Osvaldo Nardinelli, to see one of the factories that Cadbury bought 200 miles away in Beru. Welcome to Bauru. Don't worry, I'm not off to deliver triplets. This factory is big on hygiene. It's a hell of a look. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Four million of these are manufactured every single day. They're making cough sweets, a big treat in Brazil, apparently. When I buy a packet in England, where are they manufactured? It's uh, mainly manufactured in Cali, Colombia. Cali, Colombia. Cali, Colombia. Oh, Colombia? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Right. The biggest is in Cali, Colombia. So you're telling me every time I'll take a horse sweet when I've got a bummed up nose, it's come all the way from Colombia? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. All I'm wondering is, where's the chocolate? In this factory, there's not a single dairy milk or a cream egg in sight. I know it sounds obvious, but don't Cabri need to start making chocolate in order to sell it? Still, at least I've learnt one thing. In Brazil, you don't need a cough to eat whole sweets. Here, there are a traditional love token a boy gives to his beloved. You know what? I can't see Mrs. P being too impressed if I turned up with a box of these. I'm looking for that really nice dairy milk selection box. Go to any Brazilian beach, and I must say, you're not reminded of your old maiden aunt dipping into a box of chocolates. They're obsessed by the way they look. This is, after all, the land of Botox and boob jobs. The cosmetics market here is the third biggest in the world. Makeup alone is worth over a billion pounds a year. All great news for Sleek. Tanika and Malika decide it's time to do a bit of secret squirrel. They're off to snoop around Brazil's supermarkets to check out the competition and see exactly how their range could fit in. Uh, what we found was that the products were just blister packed and straight onto the hooks in the store. There was no actual cosmetic base. There's no specific area where makeup companies like Sleek can fully lay out all their products with testers, a very important part of their strategy. I reckon the girls are going to have to have a very serious rethink. It was quite difficult in terms of us visualising how the Sleek brand would be presented in their store because obviously for you know, an aspirational factor to get the brand across, we would definitely want our, our brand in an entire unit in the store. Um, I think without it, it kind of devalues the product. Next, Tanika and Malika check out their potential customers. And this is where the market testing comes in. Brazil has an amazing ethnic mix, a melting pot of Africans, Europeans and native South Americans. Sounds absolutely perfect for sleek. The good news is that the ladies are loving the makeup, but the bad news is that the Brazilians, it turns out, are used to buying the makeup door to door, not over the counter, the way sleek sell it. This is a classic problem you can encounter when you take your business abroad. The market doesn't necessarily work the same way as it does in Britain. You have two options. One, attempt to change the way the market works. Or two, adapt your product. Which will sleep do, and will it be the right decision?
Peter's on a high after visiting the art market as the traders basically gave him the big thumbs up. But I'm really worried he's not seen the bigger picture. My biggest concern mm -hmm. is how much are you going to spend on marketing and mm -hmm. PR? Because the businesses that have been successful are the ones that have been able to tell people we've got a great product, <coughs> here it is. Now there's been some great products on the web that haven't succeeded because they've not been able to tell people where they are. And that's yeah. the bit that worries me. It's the bit that worries me as well, and you're quite right. Yeah. And it should worry Peter. Unless he can find a way of attracting customers to his website, I'm concerned he's going to lose his £60,000 investment and have little to show for it.